right, all right, here we are. We are back and back. we are live, so to speak. <laughs> and we are five days away from the big day. Woo! It's uh, been quite the journey, don't you think? Yeah, and I'm going to be honest, I, I think that things are going to be interesting. I would, if I would have told you two years ago that uh, Trump would be in a re-election contest neck to neck, you would have said, oh, "No, no, 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 people are not going to re-elect Trump." You know, well, yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just amazing how uh, how we've gotten to this point with you know two assassination attempts. Uh, well, one was an attempt, another was ideation. Um, the incumbent president uh, being, you know, taken out at the kneecaps and, and told, hit the road. And, you know, his vice president has been thrust upon the Democrats as their nominee for the presidency. Uh, and then running the what a four month campaign or three month campaign August September October three month campaign, uh, who would have you know had this on their bingo card you know? Not me, but I I, I would say one thing if we're going to yes. be honest among all of us, even in January this year, a lot of us had a concern about Biden. Look, Biden is not got elected mostly because people did not want Trump. Biden is not our strongest candidate. He's not our smartest candidate. Right, right. Uh, his his lapse. Uh, I remember when they passed the, the uh, Affordable Care Act and they brought there. He, knowing that the mic was on, said, "This is a big fucking deal." Uh, okay, uh, I remember that. Uh, so, and he's always had his lapse of things that he says that people say, "Whoa, did he say that?" Yeah, he did. This is the deal, you know. Uh, and we all know that today uh, Trump was a passenger in a, in a garbage truck that they rented with his campaign because Biden decided to invert what he meant to say and call all of uh, Trump's uh, people garbage. Yeah. Uh, which I would only call two of them garbage. He was, I, don't, I wouldn't. Tony is garbage and Trump, yeah, he's garbage, but the rest of the people, right. are people, uh, you know, it's, and anyway, I, I, I need to thank Tony for uniting the Puerto Rican voters and getting them out and and, uh, and having a severe effect in the Puerto Rico governor's election. I don't think he intended to, but he's going, he already has. So, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I, I waited after Tony Hinchcliffe uh, uh, made this comment, and, and we we all had the gut feeling that something was going to happen at Madison Square Garden, and it did. Uh, I don't think we expected uh, the person opening up for for Trump to make these type of headlines, and it's unfortunate because there's so many policy issues that should be addressed, like you know North Korea sending troops, uh, elite forces to Russia to fight in the war against Ukraine. That's an issue. And in America, I saw a headline is uh, the United States is looking to China to intervene with North Korea. But let's set that aside for now. Um, it, I, let, I let Tony's statements kind of kind of lay out there for a while because I wanted to get the full context. I didn't know who this guy was uh, uh, until after his statements. Um, and what I've learned and the context of what he was trying to make a joke about, okay, I get it. But that's like inside baseball kind of knowledge. Not everyone, as we saw it, uh, in the footage at Madison Square Garden, the folks there, a lot of them were like, oh, that was awful. And and it, it just didn't land. It, the joke just didn't land. It was inappropriate. It, it was <laughs> very inappropriate. However, I did talk to, you know, some Puerto Rican friends and they got it. They're like, 
Yeah, we've got a, a, a waste issue, you know, in in in, um, in Puerto Rico. And I did some research on my own and went to an environmental blog and I read up on it. I'm like, okay, all right. I see what he's trying to get at, but not now, not not well, during the election. Yeah, I think you're giving Tony too much credit. Tony's not that smart. Really? He said he, he vacations there and... Oh, yeah. After you screwed up, you, you got to come and try to clean up. Uh, right. he, and let's get this clear. One thing that he said that nobody's hearing is that he said, all my material, I submitted the night before to the people. They had it, and they, they were cool with that joke, and they didn't say, hey, this is inappropriate. Don't do this one. You know, No, they didn't stop it. Uh, and the problem is, uh, is there a problem there? Yes. Is there a problem with garbage in New York? Yes. Yes. Is there a problem with garbage in Chicago? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, is there a problem with garbage in Los Angeles? Hell yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, uh, but if he had done it about those cities, you know, it maybe. But the thing is that some people reacted negatively, but some people applauded. And and the, the problem is that. I remember once somebody saying something about your hometown, which was true, but did not uh, 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 fly to well. And I can't remember. And it was a comedian said, uh, "Don't go to Chicago because there's a good shot chance you could get shot." Well, was that it? Was that partially true? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the people in Chicago appreciate it. No, uh, no, right. it didn't. Uh, because. At the same time, they felt it affected their tourism. And look, uh, Trump and the Republican Party is a make for are kind of sensitive. They don't they don't want us to be a state. They think that we're second class yeah. citizens. They treat us like like gar like garbage after Maria. So yeah. yeah. Uh, and but it united the, the Puerto Rican. And the problem is that the candidate for governor for the statehood party in Puerto Rico, she's a Trump ally. And she said, oh, well, uh, if, if I get elected, Trump is going to give us all these things. And they started to realize, no, he's not going to give you anything. And she tried to say it was a comedian and this, don't worry. The party had nothing to do with it. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, there's going to be a, a, a news conference and, he, and Trump is going to clarify this. He didn't. As a matter of fact, he said it was an act of love and everything was great and everything was fine. So, he, you know, but he took offense. So when they call his people garbage, but they you yes. call the island garbage. Yes. For my people garbage, you know. So, uh, and you want you want to take a, a, a defense to the one from Biden? We all know that was a typo on him. We know right. it was a typo. He didn't mean he did not mean to say that. He really didn't. But they did take it literally, and they're offended about it. Well, good for you. And you know, I it was when I first saw his uh, the the joke. And I say, no, no. I mean, it, you can't, again, you you expect something like that to come out of um, one of Trump's rallies. And <coughs> excuse me, I watch many segments of his rallies, but however, coming from him. And um, unfortunately, you know, the statements took away from uh, the overall message from both camps because... Like you just said, Jimmy, you know, Biden made the comment and now that's all that people are talking about. And uh, it's a disservice to America and well, very unfortunate. It's a disservice to America, but that's the problem that we have. <coughs> Look, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to put the caveat, I'm 75 years old. But these people saying, here's an 80-year-old one. Here's an 81-year-old people. And they say senile, crazy things that are attributed to their age and to their senility. Look, you want to go uh, this week? Trump spent 20 minutes talking about a golf player. Yes. Okay? And the, the problem that I have is what I call the double standard. If Biden did that, he's senile. He shouldn't be president. He's crazy. He's stupid. No, no, Trump said it. No big problem. Okay, that's that's Trump being Trump. But, but if we said it, like, oh look, uh, 
Right. So the, the, the problem is that we have reached a point where the party's powers want to control. Trump controls the Republican Party. There is no Republican Yes. It's a Trump party. Uh, and to a certain degree, Biden wanted to control everything, and he realized that he couldn't because he doesn't have the brains to do so. So he had, had to be replaced. He was replaced. Look, even you and I saw that debate in June, and we went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It it and yeah, add that to the mix of everything that went uh, went wrong um, during this election cycle. Uh, that was uh, fascinating in a way as watching a slow train wreck, and um, and here we are now. Here we are now. Yeah, and I uh, I do dispatches every day. Um, for like the last 10 days now uh, about what's happening on the street. And um, I see very targeted campaign efforts, uh, particularly uh, those seats that the Democrats find vulnerable. You see a lot of activity. Um, those seats that hold Republicans in them um, that they believe are vulnerable. And I'm talking about out West and West Orange. We have uh, Representative Carolina, uh, Carolina Amnesty, and then South in, um, excuse me, Meadow Woods into Osceola, we have uh, Representative Paula Start and uh, seeing a lot of energy there. Um, I haven't been out east that often lately, um, but I, I, I see why we're not seeing a lot of energy in District 5. Um, those races seem to be uh, closer than anticipated, so we're seeing a ton of resources um, go to, to those races. From my observation, uh, I see... You're, you're right. Look, the hotel industry... And the realtors have put money because, in their mind, mm -hmm. to defeat either Nicole or prevent Kelly from being a commissioner so they could get the things that they want through. Uh, and this is the sad part is that they're, count they're not involved in District 3 because they think that either Linda or Myra will vote with them, so they, they, they don't care about that race at all. Exactly. Uh, they have gone negative on both of them, on Nicole and Kelly, and they, they've even gone to the point that it's become even offensive. My concern is I think that we tend to forget two things. Mike Miller did the same last time around with uh, Emily, and we were concerned that Emily was going to lose, and really, Emily kicked his, you know what? She did. Oh, and she did the same with Ted Edwards. And we thought that Betsy had all the money and, and Betsy was going to be reelected. Yeah, the Sentinel came without with some negative articles, but no. To be quite honest, uh, the one that, and this is, well, I say this and people tell me, am I crazy? Yes. I'm not concerned about Kelly. I think Kelly's going to make it barely, but she's going to make it. The okay. one that, that I'm concerned about is Nicole. And it's because Nicole doesn't want to ask for money. Nicole, with all due respect, Nicole came from a very close race. Yes. And Kelly is in a race because she didn't get 50, 50 percent, but she did get 40 some percent. About so, 41 percent. Yeah. Which is, you know, s substantial. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think she she's going to win the race because of that. Plus, uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I voted on Sunday, right? Okay. After Tony, I went with my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, yes, and I told him, yes. you, you know, you need to vote for Kelly. We're in District 5, and I'm in the line waiting to be sent where to. And a couple of people say, hey, James, any any recommendations? I say, well, look, I'll tell you about the borders. I told them about uh, Kelly uh, and one other race that I don't care to mention, uh, <laughs> which is judicial. Other than that, and then I said, you know, uh, vote for three and four. Uh, oh, yeah. 
vote against one and two. Oh, okay, okay. And, 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 and it went there. But I, I, I was talking in Spanish. <laughs> uh oh. No, that, you know, I, I wasn't talking to anybody in particular. I was talking out loud. And the, the, the beauty of it was that, uh, it, it, look, I, I think that, to be quite honest, in Orange County, the only race I'm concerned is Nicole. I'll be honest with you, three, I cannot predict because as much as people keep telling me, Myra this, Myra that, it's Linda Stewart. If it wasn't Linda Stewart, I would probably say no. And I know that might has worked the Republican vote, and I and I would say that yes. he has, but so has Linda, and some of the old time Democrats will vote for her. So yeah, and the advantage woman against men does not apply in that race, which is something that also why I'm giving Kelly the benefit because, let's be honest, in Orange County I cannot say the whole country, but in Orange County women vote for women. When in yes. doubt, Kelly, Steve. Okay, I don't know either, but I'll go with Kelly. Said, well, That's true. That's very true. I mean, we, I mean, we could look at the uh, county commission uh, before Mike Scott was uh, elected, and it was close. It was close to having uh, uh, a woman uh, in that seat, uh, but he won the runoff. Uh, but you're right, and that it, it looks good. And it may be a, a likelihood that a woman would be uh, elected Orange, Co Orange County mayor in two years. That's correct. That is a very good possibility. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So who do you predict is going to win? For, I know today is prediction day. So um, let's go with county commission, right? Correct. Let's go with county commission, yeah. All right. I'll start with... Uh, Five, it'll be close. Um, maybe fifty-two percent to forty, eh, forty-nine. Does that math work out? No, forty-eight percent. Yeah, Kelly. Um, the team put in the work early during the primary to get to voters early. Therefore, that's why she was able to meet that 41% uh, vote, 41% um, uh, vote total uh, in the primary. If, uh, if the team had talked to Joy Goff and uh, tried to come to some agreement for her to have dropped out and supported Kelly, um, I think Kelly would have won that uh, election in August. Um, even if Joy, you know, was, um, stayed in the race instead of the 15% she got, uh, peel off, you know, half of that, you know, get her closer to, to that 50%. But, uh, on November, I see, uh, Kelly winning about maybe 52%, uh, to 48. Um, so that's five. Three, that's, that's the, the interesting one. Um, I see Myra taking that. She is the incumbent, and uh, she has made inroads with, uh, I believe, a larger swath of the district than Linda. Uh, that's the one race that, you know, really hasn't garnered much attention from anyone but the two. I think um, with the issues with uh, her husband, Kevin Sutton, um, uh, she's able to manage uh, she's, you know, on social media, on television, billboards, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't seen anything. I, I mean, honestly, nothing. I mean, literally nothing uh, from the Stewart campaign. So I give the edge to uh, Myra, and I see uh, perhaps upwards of 54, 55, maybe 57% of the vote. I'm bullish on Myra. And then District 1, that's the that's the tough one. That's that's the fight out there in West Orange this year. This is the fight. Not only do we have District One, we have uh, District uh, House District Forty Five with um, Amici and uh, Leonard Spencer. 
Um, as a bonus, I'll throw in the, the uh, House District 45 race, too. I see Arthur, I see Austin Arthur winning District 1 by a slim margin. Um, you know something? I'm going to be a little bit bold. I'm going to say 52-48. I just think, I mean, today's the last day to receive donations. Uh, given past experience, there's not going to be an outpouring of money for Nicole. I've monitored her campaign. Um, it's been lackluster. She started very late, despite being the incumbent. Uh, Austin Arthur has started early. Uh, his message is resonating, particularly as the negative attacks have escalated against him. Uh, from my conversations with uh, District 1 residents and people familiar with both campaigns, the negativity has reached a fever pitch and people are being turned off by it. And I believe it's having, I think it's having the negative effect. Um, and of course, um, Austin has um, the resources to run an effective campaign. And what I do know, he's doing that. So I give the edge uh, to, Nicole, to, uh, to uh, Austin Arthur uh, because uh, of, of the organization that he has in place, uh, a very professional, uh, organized effort. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm always about strategy and organization, and he definitely has it. Okay, so it's my turn. I'm and, I get, and, and my bonus, House District 30, uh, 45, I give it to Amnesty. Wow, okay. Okay, I'm going to give you a different bonus, but that's that's okay. Okay. District 1. Mm -hmm. It's close, but I'm going to give it to Nicole by gender. Mm. Okay. It's that close that I'm going to give it to her by gender. Not... Okay because of campaign or not campaign, this or that, because I'm going to be very honest, they are, the first time around her campaign was not, started okay, but it was not one of the best, okay? It started yeah. good, but it, okay. And it was, I like to compare it to Kamala Harris, it was something at the last moment too. Oh, good, yeah, yeah that's a good comparison. That's a good comparison. So, and she be, be an incumbent. Uh, now, District three, that one, I don't see it that separate. I see Myra winning by, by 52, why? Yeah. Two reasons, believe it or not. Yes, she's organized, she's done the work, she's put in the efforts and all that, but The residents there are not extremely happy with her accomplishments. They are. Sure. Okay. Uh, and District 3 has a, a thing that the gender is going to disappear because there's two women. Yes, it will be 52, my 48, but my biggest concern is the scandal. Yeah. How much will that reduce her margin of victory? That's that's what I'm trying to come from. I'm not mm -hmm. saying she's not going to, but when you say 57, why don't when I go there? It's because I don't know if her husband's scandal would take away three, four, or five percent. I'm not sure. Maybe it doesn't take anything, but cool. it could. Five, I would say 55 to 45, uh, to be quite honest, what you use in District 1 is having the, the same in District 5, that people are sick and tired of the negative campaign coming out of Steve Laurie's camp, saying that she's not a real professor, saying that her husband is a developer when he's an engineer. You know, all that is backfiring on them. And I'm going to call it, it's backfiring. Major league. Uh, uh, and, Idiots. And so when people tell me, does he have a good good people behind him 
Whoever's putting out those commercials, if you're in his campaign, you're an idiot. I'm going to call no. you, you are an idiot. That does not work. And one of the things that I'm going to do after this campaign is start to try to find a phone, a phone to just go out there. And when you guys put out commercials that are lies, just call you out. Now, my bonus is going to be in a different area. Uh oh, here we go. There is a judicial race. And since you're one of our experts in judicial races, yes. There's something I should tell people about judicial races that most people don't know. Okay. I get calls mm -hmm. every day from family, from clients, from there's about six judges here. I don't know anything about them. How should I vote? Right. Yes, no, yes, no. This person, that person. Correct. Believe it or not, pissing off the bar of the bar members has never been a good idea because it is going to hurt you back. That race, that race. Yes, sir. I'm going to give it to Peyton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And then there's a second race uh -oh. that we forgot about, but I didn't, but you did. State attorney. Oh yes, that oh. that was that was on my <laughs> that was on my mind. Yes, I must admit. Okay. Yes, yes. It was on your mind, but it was. Yes, it was. Uh, out. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, that race is not close. Even though the Republican Party has tried its best to back Bain, mm -hmm. even though the only person they could find was a scandalous removed judge to come out and say that he was for him. Well, just ask yourself why he's no longer chief judge and you find out everything. Uh, no. Mina has screwed himself also by endorsing him because that's going to cause them to say that he's a Dino and he might remain there because up to now there's not been a strong candidate against him. But that might cost him too. Uh, he's not going to get any support from the Democratic Party in Orange County in the future, if, in his future races. Uh, and if you listen to me, you're not going to get, trust me, I've talked to too many members of the party, it's not going to happen. But Borrell is a woman, woman vote for women, she's going to have that favor. She was elected twice. And a lot of people are unhappy that DeSantis questionably removed her from the, from her position. And I wouldn't be surprised that she gets elected on Tuesday. And prior to her, uh, as soon as she's sworn in, he removes and points somebody else. That's the mentality of that moron. Now, those are what I would consider the local races. The house races, look, is Nate got going to beat Susanna? No. Why? Yeah. Because, let's be clear, Carlos lost that race because now that district is Republican. It's not because this or that or the campaign or that. It is not a purple district. It is a red district. Okay? Okay. So that is, let, Let's not forget, two years ago, Carlos ran against Susanna in that same district, and That's he lost. Perfect. Carlos was the incumbent until that day. He lost not because he was not doing a good job. It's because it was switched into a Republican district. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason. Our congressional people, uh, 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 Maxwell and and and, and uh, Darren. Darren got to get reelected. So I don't worry about that. I'm not going to give them much time because the people that have a running against them don't even deserve to be dignified by even considering them candidates. Other than the fact that. There are people, Republicans, straight up. Okay. That's the revolts they're going to get. And this right. is a Democratic uh, count. That's so, right. Yeah. So it's not it's not going to happen. But, yeah. Now, I, I, oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I, I just want to have that discussion about MENA. And it's, a, it's kind of like a segue into the larger conversation about what's happening here in Orlando. 
and also Orange County with their recent uh, gentleman's agreement to back off of Orlando backing off of uh, the Deseret Ranch annexation um, and return, um, the county will pay for uh, the Kia Center and uh, Camping World Stadium uh, renovations and also the city and the county, Orlando City and Orange County will uh, work together uh, to operate a, a new shelter um, that used to be a receiving center um, for, um, I guess, incarcerated people, whatever. Uh, but what I'm getting at is that Mina, Sheriff Mina's campaign apparatus um, is under that Buddy Dyer uh, family tree. And the people that run his campaigns also run Buddy Dyer's campaign. And Buddy Dyer is the, uh, for all purposes, is, is the pol political powerhouse here in, in Orange County. And the reliance on the Democrats um, for any of Mina's campaigns that I've personally been involved in um, is minuscule, if any. I, I don't think Mina would have in, in any type of uh, issues with the Democrats, whether he runs again for sheriff, if he's allowed to, yes, he is, uh, or run for mayor of Orange County. Uh, his reliance on the Democrats is, is um, performative at best. You're partially correct, but there, okay. is, there is a problem. Okay. Tell me what Democrat, since Mina has been in office, has run against him? None. No, there was no Democrat that ran against him this last election. He had no, I mean, there were people who filed uh, as Democrats, but then later withdrawn or were disqualified because they couldn't meet the financial or petition uh, count. Um, to to qualify. Um, the last Democrat to offer a challenge was uh, Shepard. And we know how that went. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you a question. You're right that Mina is running this campaign. But let me ask you a question. Who is running the campaign with Ellen Perry and Mina for Bain? No, you no, Jimmy. I I never looked into. I I just I guess I just kind of. Let me put it in a different way. Do you think that Mina would agree <coughs> to endorse Bain to come out publicly and let his name to be used without consulting? Buddy Dyer and his people. Just, just, just that simple question. Let me put it in the proper perspective. Would you think that Mina would do this? Say, okay, I am going to go out here and live. I'm not going to talk to Buddy. I'm not going to talk to the that, that, that part of the campaign. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm going to do this on my own. Do you really think he would do that? No, I think there were conversations. I even think there were conversations with <laughs> um, Governor DeSantis. To be honest. Okay, so if it wasn't done with the police, with, 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 with funds and the people who ran Buddy's campaign, then I'm going to say this it definitely had their blessings. Sure. Mina is not going to act without their blessing. That's true. Mina is not going to put his name out there without saying, hey, buddy, you think like, is this not going to bring any, any controversy? Because right now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Correct. Going against Worrell is going against a local party. Oh, local definitely. Party supports Worrell to, to, to the team. Okay? So going against them and endorsing a independent and name only against a Democrat? Ooh, yes. So definitely 
he had the permission. What surprised me is that basically he did not talk to some of his people and say, hey, can this backfire on me? Look, Bill and Perry's not going to run for office. He can. He has too many scandals to even consider. It, okay? He's not going to run. Sure. So, the, but Mena is going to. That's what I'm trying to get to. Did somebody sit down and say, look, you know, you're going to run against the person, uh, somebody who, and by the way, the people who are financing and supporting Warrell are not to be sneezed at either. Okay. They can run a campaign against Mina. Very effective. They can find a very qualified African American to run against him and take him out. But I don't think it was thought through. Look, they did not need me, Mina, nor Bell and Perry for the Bain campaign. They really didn't. So I'm just thinking, what were they thinking? Because right now, this is going to backfire sooner or later. And it's going to backfire. And Buddy supposedly has won maybe no more elections. And I don't know how much he cares. Second, I've been told by two people in the city, and this is kind of interesting, and the city really never had the interest in annexation, but they th thought of it as, as a chip that they could use to negotiate with the county. And they got what they want in exchange. So basically, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, with all the horse trading, the deals to support this candidate over, over another that's not necessarily a Democrat, um is this the fracturing that we're seeing is is are we seeing features are we seeing the 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 cracks in in the veneer of the democrats are we seeing a a, a resettling of sorts a reset no we have seen what we have always known this is not the first time that buddy dyers endorsed a republican as a matter of fact in district five he endorsed a republican District 1, I uh, hear that he's helping out the people of Austin. Off it. Um, how true that is, I do not know. Uh, District 3 is kind of interesting because I keep hearing he's helping Linda. That's, I keep hearing, I cannot prove that, okay? I'll say that, I keep hearing it, but I can't prove it. But the truth of the matter is that Buddy has been called a dino for years. It's not something new or something that's weak. That division has always been there. Uh, Right. Okay. The truth of the matter is basically the more the, the, I, I consider Tony Ortiz, the Republican, more reliable to help uh, Democrats than I do Buddy. But that's uh, that, 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 that's me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this is the, the thing that I think we need to understand. Realistically, there's also a, been, been a group of people who think we're the Democrats, we control uh, the. the the county party, yeah, you guys make your noise and do your stuff, but we're the ones who who, who, who decide what to do. And and truthfully enough, yes, they, it, it has happened. So right now, they, yeah, it, it, it's going to be to see, but that race, and that's why I brought it up, is going to backfire. Mm. Because, first of all, I'm going to say this very respectfully, Mina, you have no political backing in this county. People don't, they know you're their sheriff. They like you. You're okay, but no big deal. Okay. Belvin, you're even worse. You mm. think you were the chief judge? Yes, and most people didn't like you as chief judge. And your last big trial was the Casey Anthony case. So let's, let's, not, let's not continue. Right. Okay. And the reason you're no longer a chief judge or a judge is well documented. So let's 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 leave it at that. Uh, neither of those two of them have much of an influence in this town. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be honest. Even endorsement from 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 who we consider the big guy, from Buddy Dyer. Right. A lot of those people that Buddy has endorsed have have lost their races. <laughs> That's true. Some, some people call Buddy Dyer's endorsement the kiss of death. And it could, <laughs> Uh, right. I mean, did, didn't he endorse Ted Edwards against uh, 
if Emily, uh, Emily yes, I, I believe so. He um, and he endorsed Mike Miller against Emily. Yeah, yeah. he, he endorsed, endorsed uh, the, the Harris lady uh, in uh, in Maribel's first race. He endorsed her, and she subsequently left the race. So. Yeah, 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 you're you're kind of right. Um, as recently as in uh, West Orlando, uh, he supported uh, Travers uh, over um, Shan. So Buddy does not have a good track record. No, he doesn't. And, and let me be honest, Buddy is elected not because he has the greatest machinery. If you have elections in March and not in November, and you have a turnout of five to ten, fifteen percent. No big deal. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, look, uh, right now, I'll take this t- the, the city of Winter Park. The ex-mayor and his family is supporting Kelly. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So you would think, oh, well, wait a minute. These people are, no, no, no. And, and openly and working the campaign. And, and so, uh, look. The, the concern I have is, did they need to put out an ad to back Bain using Democrats? Why? Who was the moron who thought that would help? Oh, did I call him a moron? Yes, I did. Because they are. That is not helping Bain at all. Where does the money come from for an independent, since it cannot come from the Republican Party, and basically, you have gone and endorsed against a Democrat. Yeah. And you're going to run as a Democrat, and you're Mina, and Buddy Dyer retires, and Escalante is the mayor of Orlando. You have a problem, Mina. Major problem. Oh, did I, did I make a prediction? <laughs> I made a prediction. I think you have, Jimmy. I think you have. Ana Escalante is going to be the next mayor of, of, of Orlando. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we'll, we'll she, see. Uh, whoever is the mayor is going to inherit a lot, uh, and I believe we're we're going to see uh, some things that. Uh, because of the lack of turnout and the lack of civic in, civic engagement in the mayoral race, um, we're going to see things come to light that uh, perhaps is not going to be the, um, Orlando's best face forward. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. But yeah, so we, we we have to see what's going to happen. But those are my predictions, and as to Orange County. All right. I'll, I'll let you start with the state. What are your predictions statewide? <laughs> Oh, statewide or or the state's attorney? Oh, if you want to go to state attorney, go for it. Ah, I should have kept my mouth shut. Um, Again, I like organization. I like the strategy. um, And I do take into consideration the personalities. uh, And also, yes, the genders do do count. And again, I'm going to have to go with Bain. It's just been overwhelming. Personally, have I received anything? I haven't received anything in the mail. However, you know, my friends and surrogates and, and, and so forth in the community have given me, you know, insight into the ads that they see, the, you know, television spots. Uh, I've got a bunch of mailers and uh, from, you know, various candidates uh, that are not here in District 5. So I'm thinking... With Bain and Worrell, based on organization and strategy, um, I'm going to give Bain the advantage here. I'm going to give him uh, 50, 54-47. Okay, let me ask you a question. 53-47. Let me ask you a question because this is your, you have a point, and I just have a couple of questions about that. How effective are sending out cars to people vote for me. I don't find it. Uh, I, when you say sending out cards, are you talking about through the mail? Uh, the mail. Yeah. The mail. Post, postcards? No, no. Um, mail are saying, I'm vain. I'm doing a great job. Oh. 
Jimmy, you know how I feel about that. Go straight to, into the garbage. Seven seconds to grab someone's attention. Most of those things go straight into the garbage. Okay. Not as effective as other means. Okay. You, and this is the reason I brought it up. Uh, he has TV commercials. I'm going to give him credit. But, like I said, Mina is not going to move anybody. Elvin, e even less. Even less, okay? So I'm not sure, you know, my, my concern is that I'm not saying he doesn't have an organization. I'm not sure if they're doing a good job. That's probably why I gave it to Orel. He does. And let me be blunt. Orel's people have won two races here. Her race and uh, Aramis, correct? Correct. So I'm going to give him credit that maybe we, we think it's, it's not doing what I think is going to be a, 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 a problem for for Orwell is basically how people perceive her. Was she removed correctly or was she removed incorrectly? That's my only concern to her campaign. But well, then again... In, yeah. in, in my concern with your statements is that uh, those two races uh, Aramis and uh, Worrell. I'll start with Worrell. She faced, you know, some serious competition in the Democratic primary. She got past it. Yes, she did have a force behind her, the uh, Ayala people and so forth and so on. Uh, however, in the general election, she faced tepid, <laughs> unknown Republican opposition, if there was a Republican in the race or an NPA. I cannot recall. However, that's different when you have a personality and a campaign like Baines. Granted, they're doing a lot of things uh, that they're hoping will stick. I'm not seeing some key components of their campaign that I would implement that would get them closer to a winning strategy. However, what they're doing is overwhelming force. We'll see how it works. Um, World returning, and I know we talked about this, and she's been asked about whether or not she will do anything different if she does become elected to avoid being suspended again. And the answer was pretty much no. Um, so the problem is that we're saying, I'm going to let you to a position but I'm going to tell you how to run it. Uh, to be quite honest, uh, as a former criminal defense attorney, mm -hmm. one of the problems I have with uh, the old Office of the State Attorney was that they would prosecute people for the sake of argument because they, the more numbers they had, the more money they would get from Tallahassee, and they would go out and say, we put in jail so many people. Look, uh, numbers are down. And many prosecutors have decided they don't want to, they don't want to waste their time with uh, misdemeanors and stuff. That is that. Uh, we also understand that the city of Orlando and the city of, uh, of Winter Garden, they they over ticket people just to so they can make money. We understand that, and, and that state attorneys say we're not going to put somebody there to support this. I understand. That. The problem that I have is that basically. It is the discretion of the state attorney what cases to do this, what cases to do that. But we're scaring people to say, if you use your discretion, say, I don't think this case deserves the death penalty, that they're going to come back in the press and they're going to hit, hit you over the head and take you out. Uh, Bain is, is an above average person who was put in there with, a, with, 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 with I think, be tough on crime. And being tough on crime is putting Latinos and, uh, and African Americans in jail at a disproportion in numbers and ruin their, their records. One of the problems I've had even with the clerk of the court is very following. You get arrested, police arrested you, they had no evidence, they arrested you, 
Right. Clerk office puts down David Washington was arrested on June 16, uh, 2024, charged with this, this, this. He was, you were never charged. That's what's what appeared in your arrest record. Then the state attorney investigates the case, decides to not pro- prosecute you, but your arrest record is public records in the clerks of the off- court office for the rest of your life, even though you were never charged. Most clerks of the court in other counties remove that. Say, okay, we're removing this because we don't keep arrest records. We keep court records because that's our job for the record. Okay, but they don't. The other thing, the problem I have is that there is a percentage, according to national, that crime is down. Yes, we keep talking like, oh, there's crime here. Crime is down. Uh, Career criminals... It's less than three percent, and most career criminals don't get caught. For the record, uh, yeah. people who commit more than one crime and who are stupid, yes, they get caught. But what you would call a career criminal uh, that kills people because they pay him to kill people, those people normally don't get caught. So let's stop pretending that they do. Uh, my only problem is that basically, Worrell has ran a campaign according to a liberal county. Let's stop pretending that. He's running a campaign to a county that is not what he wants it to be. So okay. I'm not sure if, if that's going to go for it. Plus, it's never been a record in this county that a non-party person beats somebody with a party behind them. So in a Democratic county, you got to enter and say, okay, non-party affiliation, and a Democrat, I'll vote for the Democrat. Yeah, that's what that's the part that I'm got. If he was a Republican, I would have given him more credit. And, and if he was, oh, he is a Republican. He's afraid to run as a Republican. Exactly. Oh yeah, I mean, common sense would tell you don't run as a Republican uh, in uh, Orange County, let let alone uh, Circuit Nine. <clears throat> it, for him, it is about name recognition and pushing his name out there, pushing his name out there. Worrell has a very uh, is very popular. He has to be m- much more so, and so that people do look behind, look past the uh, NPA next to his name when they go to vote. When you know most voters, a vast majority of voters, are really not as engaged and know the candidates as well as uh, we do. That's true. It's just like a judicial race; nobody really knows. Exactly. Exactly. In closing, Jimmy. Yes. The big one. Okay. I know we talked about the state, statewide. I, I still think that the, the Republicans are going to maintain their uh, majority. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're going to maintain their super majority. Um, in the state of Florida, you mean? In the state of Florida, that's correct. Yeah. But the big one, Harris Walls, Trump fans, what say you? Okay, I'm going to make my prediction based on everything. Michigan, Wisconsin, Harris. Nevada, Harris. Arizona is up in the air. Mm. But I'm going to make a bold prediction that a lot of people are going to think I am crazy. North Carolina and Georgia are going to go Harris. And Philadelphia might go to Trump if that is the case. Really? Yes. Why? Why is everybody surprised when I say that? The last time around, with all due respect to everybody, but Biden won Georgia. That's true. By a little, by a little, yes. But he won it. He okay. did. He did win it. Okay. And that was African Americans asking African Americans to vote for white men. That's call it as it is. Now it's an African American voting early and massively in the state of Georgia. In the I don't know, maybe I, I'm prejudiced, but seeing the people that were out there voting early in Georgia, looking at them, I would say it was a 60-40. And look, maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna give Kamala, 80% of the African-American vote, and I think that is low. So I'm going to be conservative in that way. 
and I'm going to give Kamala 40% of the white vote. Will that carry her? Yes, that's what carried. With all due respect, Biden. I can see how an African Indian woman running in that state cannot win when it was the last time around was won by a white man. Uh, North Carolina, where my daughter lives, has been turning purple and more purple. Right now, the advantage that they have is that God knows the only candidate for governor that anybody knows nationwide is Mark Robinson. Yes. <laughs> for the reasons, okay, even had to have a, a thing made with Trump so he could be close to Trump and it's rallies because Trump doesn't even invite him when he goes down to North Carolina. He doesn't want nothing to do with that. So there's a good chance, an excellent chance, that the governor of North Carolina is going to be another Democrat. Yeah. And the same with the attorney general. So I think that that might just be the thing. And let's not forget North Carolina, first time around, voted for Obama. Yes. Yes, it is. So, no, being that more liberals have voted to North Carolina than conservatives, uh, at this point, I would have to say those two states. Mm -hmm. And if North Carolina, Georgia, Nevada, Wisconsin, and Michigan go to Kamala, it is over. So I'm predicting 281 Ooh. for Kamala. Now, I want to make two other predictions. That uh -oh. are, there's okay. two races that are going to be close in the state of Florida. One, and if they're going to be close because they require 60%. Okay? I'm talking now the amendments. Okay. Three is going to pass by 64, 65. Okay. The lies that you cannot, you're going to be smoking in public, with all due respect, 60% of the things that are sold in these places it's not necessarily leaf. It is gummy bears, cookies, brownies. Okay, those you don't smoke. The others, high percent, are to be used in bongs. And bongs, I don't see anybody going in the middle of the street with a bong. Okay. <laughs> I solved that. Okay, and to the wife of our esteemed governor, lady, you're lying when you say that people are going to be smoking in the street and that. There's nothing you could do to stop them because you cannot smoke in public. And this was never restricted only to tobacco. Okay, that's one thing. Okay. The original law said you cannot smoke, period. Second thing for the gentleman appears in that hat. Let me clarify to the residents of the state. Highway patrol only has jurisdictions in the highways of state of Florida. So if somebody is in the street corner smoking, even a cigarette, that person does not have jurisdiction. He has to call the sheriff or he has to call the police department if he's in a city. So interesting. People, stop lying to my people uh, with all due respect. So about, now number four is going to make it by the ching 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 because there is one element that I need to bring into this equation. Okay. There are people who are pro-life. Pro -life. Let's not try to predict, say that there isn't. There are, uh, uh, and I have a member of my family who believe who voted against it because the Bible says you can't, you do not kill. And let's start pretending. And the African American and the Hispanic community is very religious, and many of those religious people consider that murder. Okay, and I understand that. I don't agree with it one hundred percent. So I think it's going to be 61, 62. Number four. Number one and two, I think they're not going to pass. Yeah. And I'm going to leave. I'm not going to predict yeah, the other empty ones because those not uh, uh, the, those amendments have had no publicity whatsoever. None. None. So, um, so let me, I'll, I'll tackle uh, the Senate race, uh, Mercosol Powell versus the incumbent Scott. that see Scott winning that. Um it's just that I see his operation. I see his operation in uh, South Florida as very strong versus 
her operation in South Florida and across the state. Uh, I just don't see enthusiasm uh, down ballot uh, for all these candidates. Um, I also see um, Amendment 3 passing. Yuck. And believe it or not, I see Amendment 4 either not making that 60% threshold or just barely making it. But I'm leaning more to towards not making uh, that 60% threshold. Um, and for nationally, um, I see, I, I still predict uh, a Kamala Harris win. Uh, I'm not as confident as I was uh, before her uh, appearance at the DNC. However, I see her capturing pretty much the same states that Biden did. Um, and however, uh, I, I see momentum uh, from my vantage point um, with Trump. And uh, it wouldn't be, I would not be surprised if Trump uh, won um, with like 312. But uh, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at a uh, a victory for Kamala Harris. Okay, I'm going to make one prediction that, and I'm going to end with this. Okay. There is a race in my hometown, my country. We are from Chicago, and you eat hot dogs with mustard. Yes. You do not put ketchup on your hot dogs. We just don't do that. Okay. You see, I, I know where you come from. So, <laughs> and you put pickles on them too. All right. Okay. Ah, which if you go to New York and you ask the guy for a pickle, he doesn't have, he has sliced pickles, but not a entire pickle. Just, just so yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. And and they have the bottles of ketchup and people from Chicago, what's that for? Okay. Exactly. <laughs> for my fries. <laughs> okay. Puerto Rico is my hometown. I have a business down there. My cousin lives there and I have family down there. This is my prediction. Okay. Polls now have a difference of 3% between the number one and number two candidate for governor. Now, you would say, what's the big difference, Jimmy? Well, the pro statehood Republican person is ahead because Puerto Ricans think that if they vote for that party, statehood will come to Puerto Rico, which they've been voting for it for the last 70 years, and we you know where that's gone. Okay. Uh, and a candidate that aligned himself with ex members of the Democratic Party and with the pro independence party. Right. To run a candidate with the idea, let's end corruption. Corruption in Puerto Rico is kind of done in a. There's corruption here. Let's, let's, not, let's not pretend. Sure. Oh, Over yeah. There, it's more open. Okay. Like the candidate for governor for, for the state of the party has four members of her party working for the electric company. So, yeah. And her <laughs> other cousin is working and giving permits out to business. So, Ooh. yeah. So, there, 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 there is a problem. But right now, there's a phenomenon that I don't think people are seeing is that the youth has registered massively and the youth is 80% with a candidate from the Alianza, which is president of the Oregon Independence Party. If he does not win, he's going to be number two. And the Democrat, the Democrat is going to be third. Mm. That has not happened in the history of Puerto Rico. Interesting. So my prediction is going to be close, but I'm predicting that you're going to be discussing next week, how is it? And in Puerto Rico, the candidate for the Independence Party won the election. So, and this, I have to, again, thank Tony. People are starting to realize that they thought that they were loved and cared about by the people. And no, they start to realize they're not. As a matter of fact, they, they had a... Puerto Rican go and talk to try to endorse Trump. And their words were, they didn't give this words to Tony, for the record. They told her, do not 
discuss in your statement, stay here for Puerto Rico. Mm. But they did not tell him, don't call Puerto Rico garbage. So, um, you know, <laughs> oh, Jimmy, it's amazing how one world, one word can change the dynamics of an election. Oh, no, no, no. Trust me. You don't. Ins- Look, Carter lost the, the election because of, uh, of the people in, in Iran. The hostages. The hostages. Yeah. The hostages. He lost that. OK, we know that. So yeah. let's stop pretending. So but uh, we're going to be discussing next week results of the elections. Yes, we are, sir. Maybe and we'll know that there's a, a, a new president. Maybe. I'm thinking maybe in December we'll find out. But well, Wait a minute. Technically, you're right. Because Kamala's never been president. So one way or the other, there That's will right. be a new president. She was That's vice president, right. but she was never president. That's so it's correct. not that we're re-electing Biden. We're electing either for president, a new person, on either party. Well, no, no. No, no, no. It's a repeat. You have a point. Take it back. Yes, it's going to be a new president. Indeed. Oh, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, Jimmy. On that note, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you, too. This has been fascinating. I'm going to get this one out as soon as possible. And uh, I want to thank our audience. Uh, the The viewership has been going up and up and up across all of our platforms. So I'm very happy that uh, people are uh, watching and listening. And I know that some of you are sharing our content from the margins with your friends and all that good stuff and having some conversations because they and need to get back to on us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. That's right. You heard Jimmy, everyone. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Thanks, Jimmy. Take care. Take care.